silvery microphone was headed straight for my face. It almost touched my lips. I could feel the electrical current crawl through my veins. The hair on the back of my neck stood straight like a dog's hair when the mailman rings the doorbell. At the end of the hand that was holding the mic was standing my husband. He was a brilliant auctioneer. We used to work together on cruise ships selling fine art. I was admiring him every time he was on stage and secretly I wanted to be there myself. After all, when I was a child in Romania, I used to recite poems on stage. I was even chosen to recite a poem at the airport and welcome the Romanian president when he came to visit our area. So I thought, why not? I can speak on stage. So that day, I tapped him on the shoulder while he was doing his mic check. And I said, honey, do you think that maybe one day I can do what you do? Do you think that maybe one day I can get up on stage and auction a few pieces of art? All he did was grab the mic, shove it in my face, and said, go ahead, do it. I panicked. I ran. I ran. I found myself crumbled in tears on the bathroom floor. I was crumbled under the pressure of just being defeated by what, by what I wanted the most. My dream to speak on stage. I looked at myself in the mirror. Who do you think you are? How dare you believe that you can speak in front of an American audience? How dare you imagine that your voice matters? This happened 18 years ago. My husband's intention at the time is irrelevant, and I can assure you that his heart was in the right place. Maybe he was just being a man, you know, hunters. You want to speak? Here. <laughs> I'm still kind of learning about this whole masculine feminine energy <laughs> thing. Maybe I just wanted him to go, oh honey, you wanted to speak on stage? Oh, that's great. Let's pick a few pieces of art, we'll talk about it, we learn in the cabin, and then I'll help you. You know, more of the gatherer type. But that's irrelevant. What matters is what I got stuck with that day. The belief that I am not good enough. The, the belief that I will never speak on stage. The belief that my voice does not matter. That, together with a plethora of other limiting beliefs, have shackled me for years to come. And it took me a long time to start chiseling at the chains. And this is why I am here today, to share with you a little known secret and potentially one of the easiest way you can take any belief you have about who you are and what you can do and turn them into your saving grace and turn them into your stepping stone and turn them into your cornerstone. I am here today to inspire you to rise up in your greatness like a phoenix I am here not only to teach you how to overcome your limiting beliefs, but how to make them work for you and potentially find your purpose in life. Who's with me? Yay! Awesome, awesome. Many of you are wondering, what is a limiting belief? Well, it's a notion we hold as true without any empirical evidence. This notion gets between who we are and who we want to become. This notion steals our dreams. Or, as I like to call it, a limiting belief is a pebble in your shoe. 
Have you ever walked with a pebble in your shoe? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Can you walk with a pebble in your shoe? Yeah. yeah. yeah you can. I mean, you wiggle your leg a little bit, you know, your big pebble gets between your toes. You can walk. But can you run? That's your plan. No, you can't. And this is exactly how limiting beliefs are. They let us leave our life. But they don't let us leave our life in our greatness. They let us leave our life, but they don't let us reach our highest potential. So my question to you is this, do you know what your limiting beliefs are? Do you know what's stopping you from reaching your highest potential? I came to this country 24 years ago with $20 in my pocket, $500 in debt, and a duffel bag full of dreams. I left the career as a fashion designer to come and work on cruise ships, 14 hours days as a bar waitress. Nothing was going to get between me and my dreams. My dream was to become an American ever since I was seven years old. Nothing was going to get between me and my dreams until one day I let fear and limiting beliefs. Dictate, write the next chapter of my life. As a Romanian immigrant, I believed that I could not speak to my high paying customers because English was not my first language. I believed that I could never be a speaker on stage because I had an accent. I believed I could not read books in English because by the third page, I would space out and I forget everything I read. And this was killing me because as a young girl in Romania, I would read hundreds of books. I believed I couldn't drive in the United States because I didn't know the roads. They were too big, too wide, too many cars, driving too fast. I believed I couldn't write my own copy for business because I wasn't trained in marketing and because I was making too many grammatical errors. And I would shrivel every time I would come into the living room and I would see my husband hold one of those postcards, return to sender, pointing out the mistake and telling me how unprofessional it is and how much business I'm losing. How did I get rid of all these limiting beliefs? How? I'm glad you asked. Thank you. <laughs> Seven years ago, I got a puppy. Yeah. No. A pit bull. Uh, no. <laughs> and this is exactly how my friends, my family, my husband even reacted. A pit bull? Really? Are you crazy? He's going to destroy your house. He's going to turn on you. You're going to come home one day and you're going to find your Persian rugs shredded to smithereens. You know, I had no idea that there were dogs, that they were deemed vicious. I knew one thing for sure. This loving, beautiful puppy was going to prove them wrong. Do I have any dog owners here? Oh, yeah. Woo, I'm in the right kennel. Yay, I love it. What is the first thing you do when you get a dog? Name him, that's it. You give it a name and you teach him how to come when called. What is the second thing you do when you get a dog? That's a good one. That's a good one, yes. Okay, I was going with another one and I'm gonna insert a little fine print in here. And the fine print is this. The owners of Chihuahuas, Shih Tzus, Yorkies, and any other bedroom slipper on steroids will not know the answer to this question. The second thing you do when you get a dog is you teach them how to be non-reactive. Because there's nothing worse than taking your dog into a public place, especially like a wolf stock, and have to leave with your tail between your legs because your dog charged at every other dog out there. 
So now many of you will say, okay, what is limiting belief got to do with training your dog? Bear with me. Let's go back to training our dog to be non-reactive. And yes, you got to teach him to go potty. <laughs> Not in the house. <laughs> so how do you train your dog to be non-reactive without, without zapping him and stuff like that? No, just do it more positive. You take your dog for a walk on a leash. You see the leash is forward because he's not trained yet. Now, you set this up with a friend who has a dog too, so when the, do the friend comes from the other direction with their dog, right? They come from that direction, you go into this direction. So you take your dog for a walk. And when the distance between the two dogs becomes short enough that your dog starts reacting and whining and pulling the leash, all you do is go, whoops, yank the leash, turn around, and walk with your dog in the opposite direction. You turn back and you repeat the exercise. When your dog starts barking, you go whoops, yank the leash, turn around, and go in the opposite direction. You repeat this exercise six to seven times. That's all you need to do it. And voila, you have yourself a well-trained dog. So I got to thinking, what if I was to use the same technique with my limiting beliefs. The minute that voice in the back of my head went, stay in your lane, you can't do it, you're not good enough, you go whoops, yank the leash, and take extreme action in the opposite direction. It worked. It worked. Our limiting beliefs tell us exactly what to do. Our limiting beliefs tell us exactly what direction we need to go in. I was afraid to speak to my high paying customers. Whoops. I hired Coach Carrie in 2015 and she helped me bring my business on top 3% of top producing brokerages in Naples. Voila. I was afraid to speak in public. Whoops. I now record myself on my iPhone and post videos on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and Instagram, inspirational videos that inspire people around the world. And I'm speaking in front of you here today. I was afraid to read books. Whoops. I discovered Audible. I read 60 to 70 books per year. I was afraid to drive. Whoops. I got a GPS. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't even have a warning on my record. I'm an excellent driver. Of course. I was afraid to write my own copy for business. I published my first book stand out from the crowd. It became a bestseller on Amazon. And I help people overcome their limiting beliefs and find their purpose in life. Now, let me tell you something. If you read my book, and I hope you do, it still has mistakes. Yeah. And that's okay. Because the idea is not to be perfect. The idea is to get something done because done is better than none. Yes. 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 So the question again is, what are your limiting beliefs? What is stopping you from becoming the best version of yourself? What is your pain? The Bible says your pain has a purpose. I like to take it one step further and say your purpose is in your pain. What is your wound? Poet Rumi says, the wound is the place where the light enters you. I like to take it one step further and say, your wound is your light. Viktor Frankl said, suffering ceases to be suffering the moment it gets a meaning. Your meaning, your purpose is your suffering. You gotta dig it, you gotta find it. You gotta find your purpose by finding your pain your fear, your limitation, 
your wound. Go deep down into the darkest cave. The cave you fear holds the treasure you seek. I did not say it, Joseph Campbell did. But you have to stand up for yourself. You have to let the light come in. You are a beautiful creature. You are designed for greatness. You owe it to yourself to shine the light on the God and Goddess within and bring them out and give them to the world in their full glory. Do not let limiting beliefs rent space in your head. Do not let the opinion of others change your life. Your opinion is the only one that matters. But you must take extreme action before hell takes over and you'll come home one day and your life will be shredded to smithereens. What is hell? Meeting the person you could have become on your last day on earth. Why wait till then? Let's do it now. Who do we want to be? You know, I'm going through a divorce. And a couple of weeks ago, I've been having what I call an identity crisis. Some people call it an existential crisis. Some people call it an awakening. And I kept on asking myself, this question kept on popping into my head, who, are, who am I? Who am I? Yeah, who the heck am I? Because it seems like my entire life, I've been someone that someone else wanted me to be. Yeah, we do this. We go to a family reunion, even though all we want to do is to sit in bed and watch Netflix. We go, to, we go shopping with our wife, even though we just want to go to the game with our husbands, right? We cook a five course meal for our husband's friends when all we want to do is to take the day off. We say yes when we want to say no. Yeah. Any of you do that? Yeah. Yes, Any of yeah. you? Yeah. you we do it, right? Yeah. Who are we? So I had this tormenting moment in my life. I didn't know what to do. Who was I? And what am I going to do from this point on? And then I was going through some notes from a speech by Tom Bilio. And in that speech, he said, it doesn't matter who you are today. It matters who you want to become and what price you're willing to pay to get there. The price is high. You're going to lose friends. You're going to lose family. You're going to lose your marriage. I did. You're going to lose business. You're going to have sleep, sleep, sleepless nights. But the higher the stakes, the higher the prize. It is worth it. You know, I commend you guys for being here. You are not regular people. You are courageous. You are brave. You want to change yourselves. You are weird. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you are weird. Your friends, your family, your neighbors, they think you're weird. How do I know? Because I'm weird. And you know what happens with us weird people? We think we can change the world. And that's why we do. Yes. I did not grab the mic 18 years ago, but I have it now. Yes. And with it, I want to give you this message. Go out there and grab your mic. Grab your book, your health, your body, your life, your fitness, your freedom, and rise up like a phoenix. Unleash the God and Goddess within. Yes. Yes. yes.